All right, we're going to be rebuilding the carb on my son's 2000 Honda CR125. I'm going to go ahead, obviously, first we're going to remove the carb. Uh, in order to do that, I'm going to remove the air box and everything. This makes life easier. Um, you can undo it here and you can try to finagle it out. But in my opinion, it's just as easy to take a couple minutes, take the air box off, and then you got full access. Okay, so we removed the rear of the dirt bike, the rear fender, side panels, uh, and the air box. And all you got to do once you get your bolts undone um, for this, just unloosen that Phillips head screw right there, and then this whole back end will come right off. Once you do that, now you're at your carburetor. You can get back here easily, and then right there, if you can see that is uh, another Phillips screw. Um, you got to loosen that up and then this carburetor will pull right out. Alright, so once you have this loose, go ahead and remove your gas line. Um, this doesn't happen to have a clamp on it. We're going to replace this gas line. While we're at it, it's starting to get brittle. It's starting to crack. Make sure your fuel is off, obviously. All right, we're gonna go ahead and remove these two screws right here. Um, somebody's been in here before, so they stripped these out. So I believe they originally were just Phillips, um, or they could have been square head, but I think they were Phillips. So we're gonna go ahead and use our needle nose pliers to remove those. All right, once you get these two screws out, just go ahead and carefully pull your slide out. And now you got access to the carburetor, you can put this on your bench. All right, so we're going to get started here. Obviously, I'm going to clean this up a little bit, and then we're going to start disassembling this. But just want to go over a couple quick things. Um, first off, obviously, you're going to get your rebuild kit. Uh, this is made by All Balls Racing. I've used their products before, bearings and things like that, and it, it's usually pretty um, high-quality stuff. So we're going to give their kit uh, a try here. Uh, should be good. And also... We're going to get into the book here in a second, but basically what I'm trying to do with this carburetor, I want to get it rebuilt, and I want to get all the jet sizing and, um, you know, all the uh, air and fuel mixture screws back to pretty close to a stock position. Uh, ever since we got this bike, um, it, was, uh, it was driven hard and put away wet, you know, obviously quite a few times over the years, and when we got it, it... Uh, definitely needed some work we rebuilt the entire motor top and bottom end um, and a bunch of other stuff but uh, it, it's it's a great bike uh, but it's never never really ran right um, you know it ran decent but but not definitely not running right so I have a feeling that this carburetor has been tweaked and played around with a lot over the years so anyhow my, to get to the point I want to get this pretty much back to um, stock jets and uh, all the settings back to, to stock and then that'll give us a fresh start and then hopefully we can get this uh, bike adjusted properly. Alright so before we jump into this I just want to go through some of the other stuff you should have handy before you dive into this. Um, your best bet would be to get a manual. Uh, this one's for a 98 to 2002. Ours is a 2000 um, and it's got the exploded view and uh, lays out all your your part names and that kind of thing and it's it's just it's got everything you could possibly need to uh, to rebuild one of these so that would be great if you can get one uh, if you don't want to invest in one I uh, definitely recommend going online go to like bike bandit or Babbitt's and you can get an exploded view online um, but definitely at the very least have that but there's no replacement for the book because this thing's going to walk you through step by step on everything you should do um, the only other thing that I have besides the rebuild kit is um, I got a new it's number 15 which is our idle speed screw and I got that because uh, whoever owned this before kind of mangled it up pretty good and when we're trying to make adjustments uh, when we're at the track I, I couldn't even get this thing to to adjust properly so I got a new one so hopefully that fixes that problem um, but besides basic tools that should be everything you need to uh, to get the process rolling 
All right, so we're gonna go ahead and give this a quick cleaning before we go any further. It's gonna use a little bit of this engine degreaser. Small nylon brush. All right, we're a little bit cleaner now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead by starting off removing the float. You got a Phillips screw on the bottom. Go ahead and remove that. All right, so before I start disassembling this float, um, I'm actually going to measure the float distance to make sure that we're pretty close. Uh, to the spec. Uh, so I'm going to be using a, a ruler to do that. There's actually a special ruler that you can use for these for specifically measuring floats, but I don't have one, so I'm going to be using this guy. It should get me close enough. Um, but you have to have this in a certain position in order to do that. You're going to get a better look at this in a second, but there's a uh, float valve that basically plugs the hole that's giving you fuel. It's either closed so you're not getting fuel or it opens when you need fuel and this float determines uh, when that happens. So in order to measure this you have to have this float in the proper position um, and you don't want it compressed. You want it where it's just closing the valve which is right around there. You don't want it compressed like that. It's actually got to be right about there. So in order to do that we're going to set it on the bench uh, to get a proper measurement. Okay, so I'm going to try to make this make a little more sense, the position this has to be in. Um, the book doesn't, the book gives an explanation, but it can be uh, misleading. Obviously, this float right now is, is open, so fuel would be allowed in. So you want to just close this float like that. Now you're going to watch when I push on this, it'll actually go some more. You don't want it that far. You won't get a proper measurement. Again, you want this thing fully open. It's a good place to start. And very gently have the carburetor set on your bench just like that and just gently close it. And one more time, you can see that it can go further. Make sure it's at the point where it's just closed to make this measurement. Okay, so I have that in the position that I want it in. Um, I'll show you the book in a second. Uh, basically, it's calling for... Uh, 15 millimeters and that's from the face of the carburetor the metal face right here to the furthest point of the float the the highest point which is right there um, again I don't have the really the proper tool to do this but and you're probably not gonna be able to see this real well but I'm lining it up here and I'm right about I'm right about 15 so it's pretty close to being where it's supposed to be, so um, I'm not going to fool with that much. We're going to be disassembling this anyway, so once I get done, if we're careful, we won't have to reset it. I'll show you there's a little metal tab that you have to bend if you do have to adjust it, but uh, hopefully we won't have to because it's, it's pretty close to being right on. All right, so we're going to go ahead and remove the float assembly now. Uh, we'll go ahead by removing this Phillips head screw first. All right, now this whole float should lift out. Okay, if you can see that tab right there that our needle valve is hanging on, you can see that right there. Um, that's the tab that I was talking about earlier that you can slightly bend in either direction to change the, the height of the float. Okay, so once you get your float out, go ahead and slide your pin out, set that to the side. Um, that's your fuel valve. Let's take that, set that to the side. Uh, the kit comes with a new one, so more than likely we won't be reusing that. Uh, but hang on to it just in case. So basically, that's your float. 
Uh, there's no more moving parts on this, so you don't have to worry about losing anything. Um, what we're going to do now is obviously look for visual defects. Um, once you do that, get yourself a jug of water. I always take old uh, water jugs and, and cut them down and fill them up with water. You're going to want to take this float. Yeah, I can shake it right now. I know there's no water in there. We're going to submerge it in the water. Um, we're going to look for a couple things. First, we're going to look to see if any bubbles come up. Um, and hopefully we don't. Then we'll leave it submerged in there for a while while we're doing other stuff. And uh, we'll see if it fills up with any water. This one seems like it's in good shape. So I don't think we're going to have that issue. Um, but definitely something you want to do. All right, I'm not seeing any bubbles, but anyhow, we'll let that sit for a little bit. Okay, looking down into this now, um, we're going to go ahead and remove the main jet, and we're going to remove the pilot jet. We'll set that to the side. I want to try to get a number off of this to see what size was in there. Just use a medium sized flathead screwdriver for this one. All right, next we're going to remove our baffle plate. That's just this plastic thing right here. Um, pay attention to how you took that off. You can really only put it back on one way, but just pay attention to that. That should slide right off at this point. Um, then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this guy right here. Um, the book calls that a needle jet holder. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and remove that. All right, next step is we're going to remove this Phillips screw right here. All right, that right there is our valve seat, so we're going to go ahead and remove that. Uh, there should be an O-ring underneath there. very gently okay there's that guy right there and again there's that old ring we were talking about uh, the kit probably comes with a new one but you never know with these kits so just be careful not to lose that or, or break it just in case All right, next we're going to go ahead and remove this air screw. Um, the right way to do it is to slightly seat the air screw and uh, count your number of turns so you can put it back roughly where it was. We're going to do that, um, but this thing was played around with so much, um, I'm pretty much going to set everything back to as close to factory as possible, but um, we're going to do it for the sake of doing it. Eh, about three turns, give or take a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and remove that completely now. There's going to be a spring behind there, so look out for that. There it is. All right, next uh, we're going to remove the idle speed screw. Um, 
if you're trying to get this back to where it was, uh, you would actually measure the amount of threads that are sticking out past the lock nut. Um, but you can see this one's pretty mangled up. And I mentioned earlier in the video, um, I actually got a new one of these. This wouldn't come with your your rebuild kit, but uh, I got a new one just because of the fact this is mangled up. And I know whoever had this before tried adjusting that, and um, I know it's definitely definitely not near where it's supposed to be. So we're just going to replace that, and we're just going to have to adjust that once we get the, the bike up and running. But uh, you go ahead and remove that. I got this loose already. Just take your your adjustable wrench and loosen that up and this thing should pull right out. Again, if you're trying to get it back to where it was, uh, you know, you got an eighth of an inch of thread sticking out or whatever, um, just measure that and write that down somewhere. All right, so the last moving part that we should have to remove will be this choke assembly. Um, and you don't necessarily have to do it in the order I did it in, um, whatever makes sense. The book kind of does guide you through step by step. I just kind of did it randomly, to be honest with you. Um, so we're going to go ahead and remove this. And uh, at that point, all the moving parts should be out of here. Um, then we can take some carbon choke cleaner and start cleaning everything out. So at this point, um, that's where the uh, choke assembly was. Everything, again, moving part-wise, should be disassembled. Um, just make sure you didn't leave any O-rings behind or anything like that that you could damage. Uh, and at this point, get yourself some carbon choke cleaner. And uh, I'm going to bring this outside where i got a little room to work with where I can spray at this. And basically spray into all the crevices, all the holes, all the openings, and, uh, you know, your goal there is to clean out any gunk that's in there, uh, varnish that, uh, you know, may have gotten there from uh, from old gas sitting and that kind of stuff, um, basically cleaning out all the passages, really. And at that point, um, we'll start laying out our rebuild kit, and uh, we'll start reassembling. Okay, so we're all cleaned up. Um, I got everything laid out here. This is all the disassembled parts, and this is our rebuild kit, and uh, that's the uh, idle adjustment screw I had to buy separately. Um, basically, I just like to lay things out and compare what I took out to what the rebuild kit has, make sure that I have everything. Um, obviously, the rebuild kit doesn't come with everything. You know, it's not going to come with a float or a needle jet holder or anything like that. Um, choke assembly, that's all separate stuff. It basically comes with your jets, O-rings, springs, things like that. Um, so anyhow, we're all set up now. We're cleaned. Uh, I'm going to set up the camera on the stand and start reassembling. We're going to go ahead and put in the new air screw. Make sure you put your spring on first. It's going to go right in here. I'm going to lightly seat that, so we're going to turn it in until it stops. Um, don't tighten it, tighten it. Uh, you don't want to do damage to it. You just want to get it to a point where it stops just like that. Um, according to our recommendation sheet, um, they're calling for two turns out, so we're going to start there. One... Two. All right. Needle jet holder.
Now we're going to go ahead and install our new main jet. Um, these can be really hard to read unless you got really good young eyes. Um, but it looks like the one that was in there was a 320. Our recommendation sheet is calling for a 350. Um, and I believe, again, it's a little hard to read, but I believe the one that came with the kit is a 360. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and, and try that 360 anyway. I don't have anything to lose. Um, we were having a hard time getting this um, carburetor adjusted right. So I'm going to start off with this. If I have issues, I'll, I'll get some different size jets and we'll, we'll play around with it. But I'm going to go ahead and put the 360 in and uh, we'll, we'll start with that. Make sure that you get that jet tight so it's hitting the top of the uh, the holder. Uh, but all this stuff is brass, so don't put too much into it. Just get it where it's just tight. Next is going to be our pilot jet. Um, again, our recommendation sheet is saying, where are you? Uh, it's calling for a 50. The one that came with our kit, uh, I believe, is a 40. Again, hard to read, but pretty sure that's a 40. And the one we took out, uh, it's next to impossible to read, but I took it outside in the, the daylight and it looks like a 45. So, again, I have the 40. I'm going to use the 40. I have, uh, again, nothing to lose. I kind of need a starting point with this. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put the 40 in. Because the uh, recommendation sheet is just that. It's a recommendation. Um, depends on your altitude, it depends on what muffler you have, and a whole lot of other things. So we're going to start with this and we'll, we'll see what happens. It's going to go in right there. Again, just lightly seat that give it you know a little bit of a twist but uh, not too much or you'll you'll end up ruining the threads valve seat Next is our baffle plate. This is just going to set over the main jet and just kind of clicks in place. So take your float now. Um, I tested this in water like I talked about earlier. Uh, there was no bubbles and it didn't fill up with any water so that's in good shape. Um, so what you want to do is take your new fuel valve. That's this guy here and you can see that tab right there you're just going to slide this onto that tab just kind of rest there um, be careful because it will slide right off so go ahead and set your float in place get that lined up and take your pin and you're going to slide that pin through Okay, this sets there like that. And take your screw, and that's going to hold your float assembly in place. At this point, we can go ahead and put our float bowl back on. Um, this is the old gasket or O-ring. Um, the kit comes with a new one. I'm going to give it a shot. Uh, sometimes these don't fit quite right. Um, sometimes they do, but sometimes you're almost better off 
sticking with the old one if it's not ripped or overly flattened out. If, you know, if you weren't having any leaks coming out of it before, uh, you're probably okay to reuse it. But if the new one fits properly, um, you're better off with the new one, obviously. So I'm going to go ahead and try the new one, and we'll see what happens. All right, looks like that new one's going to work out. Uh, a lot of times on these, it'll end up where the O-ring is a little bit bigger and it, it tries to kind of like form a, a bubble, if you will, and you can't get it down flat. It keeps popping out as you go along. Um, but this one's actually pretty good, so... I uh, just wanted to re-mention, uh, before you put your cover back on, uh, you may want to re-measure your, your float uh, distance, make sure that that's still accurate. Um, other than that, you'll have to take this all back apart. But I didn't move mine around, um, and I kind of checked it manually, you know, without a ruler, and uh, looked like it was pretty much right about where I needed it. All right, we're going to go ahead and put that new idle speed screw in. That's our new lock nut. I'm going to start off with it somewhere right around there, maybe an eighth of an inch or something like that. Um, you know, we're definitely more than likely going to have to adjust that. That's going to go right inside here. And I'm going to tighten that up. That's actually a small Phillips head. Uh, mine was so damaged that I couldn't even tell what it was when we were out at the track one day. I was adjusting it with a pair of needle nose vice grips. Um, so anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and tighten that down. We're going to go ahead and reinstall our choke. Um, I cleaned this up really good. Uh, just make sure that this is moving freely. Uh, and you can go ahead and reinstall that. All right, so we're all put back together. Uh, our next step now is to put this back on the bike. Um, we've got a new jet needle that we're going to install. Uh, they give you a new E-clip. So I'm going to go ahead and check the recommendation on this. I think it's the, the third groove, um, but I'm going to check that. But anyhow, this is ready to go, uh, so we're going to get to uh, installing this on the bike. All right, so I'm working on removing the jet needle um, off of the uh, bike. Um, I figured the best way to show it is actually through the book um, and then we'll go over there and take a quick look. Um, but basically you got to pull your spring out and get it out just like they're showing here in the picture and then once you get that spring pulled back, it's a little tricky because the spring wants to go back at you, um, but just kind of hold it back out of your way the best you can. You might need a small pair of needle nose pliers or something and once you get that back like this, out of your way, holding the spring, um, then you can see where the cable goes in. And now you got to take this cable, push it down, 
and pull it out and that will will pull right out all right that's what it looks like once you get the cable pulled out of there I uh, just used a pair of small vice grips uh, to hold the spring back um, I wrapped some tape around there uh, you know just be careful you don't want to cause any damage to the cable all right so now we got our throttle valve uh, detached so we're gonna go ahead and change our our needle out in order to do that should be able to see inside of there hopefully um, you have to remove um, the cable retainer and I'm not sure if there's a special tool for that to be honest with you um, but a six millimeter socket fits on there not perfectly um, but it does fit over it so if you take that tap it on a little bit should be able to pull that off All right, so now our needle should come out. And it is on, looks like the third groove down. Um, and that's what our recommendation sheet is uh, calling for. Let's see, just taking a quick look. Yep, third position down. So we're gonna stick with that because that's what the recommendation is. So we're just gonna stick with that, but we're gonna replace it. Now's a good time also to clean the inside of this out. Um, if you can get a little wire brush in there, that would be ideal. Um, and then uh, spray it down with some carbon show cleaner. Because if you can see down that far, there's some dirt and grime in there, and you don't want that getting down into your main jet. Okay, so uh, that just about does it for the rebuild. Um, we put the jet needle back in. The only thing left we have to do is hooking back up our cable, which is just the reverse of taking it out, obviously. Uh, once you do that, put your cap back on. Your two screws will hold that in place. Uh, there is another O-ring or gasket underneath. Uh, the kit came with a new one, so go ahead and replace that. And uh, put it on and uh, start it up and, and do, your, uh, do any adjustments you need. Um, hope it helped.